Welcome back. Well, GPs across the nation are struggling to cope with the amount of patients requesting testing for COVID-19 or coronavirus. One doctor has taken up the, the initiative of his own unique way to do it all, testing and swabbing patients in the car park to avoid infecting or potentially infecting other patients in his waiting room. As a former head of the Australian Medical Association, Dr Mikesh Harkawell is no stranger to health policy and pandemic preparedness, but he's still also, unlike some, working at the coalface, seeing patients personally. So I thought he would be good for us to speak with tonight. He joins me live here in Melbourne. You're an unusual creature, uh, Dr. Harkerwell, because you have all of this experience at a national level. Uh, you were, I know, heavily involved in preparedness for avian flu and SARS mm. and other things, but you're still seeing patients. So you're now seeing it all, you know, the ramifications of a new crisis, uh, literally at the patient level. You took it upon yourself to start swabbing your patients in a car park long before anyone else thought about remote testing preparedness or ensuring that people weren't walking into uh, waiting rooms and infecting others. Tell me a bit more about that. So um, we could see early in January that things were going to get tough and the mm -hmm. question is how do we do something about it and as usual you procrastinate. And when our first case happened um, we managed it but there's lots of things that could have been improved and the kicker for us was um, the person came in and was waiting in the waiting room uh, that could have infected people there. That person could have infected my staff. Um, and also, once we tested that person in, in our rooms, the doctors were infected, and the room had to be closed down. Mm. So once you get in my place to 18 rooms, and most people don't have 18 rooms, you're out of business. So not only is it bad for business, it means the patients then can't get more services when they are sick. So we wanted to have a scheme that improved pe people's access to services, but also reduce the risks of people who are sick getting it whilst waiting. So the idea is people ring ahead, that's really important, and they're really good at doing that. But they are, I was going to ask you that. Yeah. Um, then they present um, in the car park and they use their smartphone or their uh, device, uh, d tablet mm -hmm. and call ahead. We have a video consult session, it's on our, um, on our um, website. Um, and then we have that consultation which is pre-booked, uh, where people have that one-to-one -one conversation. And you get so many good cues by having that one-to-one -one visual uh, ability to, call, to talk to someone, you see if they're stressed, if they've got temperature and so on. And, and assuming they don't need to be physically examined, um, you prepare everything in front of the patient to get that, which is, you know, ba three lots of swabs, bags in for the swabs to go in, bags for the bags to go into, then you've got to get re uh, dressed up, then you go out to the car and you do that. But you're not doing that infecting anybody else. So you do all this stuff, everyone's clean on the way out, you take the swabs, you go to the back of the practice and get rid of everything in the sluice and then you come back and you're able to wash your hands and get going because you've not contaminated anybody and they can go off and self-isolate for uh, the two or three days for the test to come back or obviously longer if they come back positive. I, I love to hear you are using technology. We've all been promised technology in medicine. You know, we've all been, uh, been told about remote consults and the, and the use particularly of video conferencing. You hardly ever see it in practice. Most doctor surgeries are pretty antiquated in terms of they process patients like they have for the last 30 or 40 years. Well done you, this is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's been built on initiatives from governments over years and um, uh, we've seen a certain level of preparedness using technology. Mm -hmm. um, but, and, and that helps the process. It means that if people, if this thing gets worse, can be consulted from home and actually it shouldn't be just the people with COVID or the people that are exposed to it. It should be people who need a normal medical consultation and normal health checks because COVID aside, if we don't look after and continue to look after the health needs of people who are unwell, our health burden and illness will be much more massive from non-COVID stuff. And, and look, COVID-19 is just the latest pandemic risk. It will not be the last. We've seen that in the, in the past. Just on the testing point, there's been a lot of concern that there, there isn't enough access to testing or people are concerned themselves are being given a bit of a mixed message, yeah. test or not to test. Yes. Where are you with that? And what's been your experience getting tests processed? Uh, well, the big question is what to test for. And that's changed dramatically from January onwards. So mm -hmm. when just before the, t the, 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 band, the China ban came in and after that time, it was very strict criteria for when you would do this. You could have been to China, you've come in, you've had a temperature, you're not well. Then it got wider, the ban the stretched wider, uh, and then the criteria changed when um, you know, one of my colleagues uh, had been to the States, mm -hmm. which was not a place where you actually had uh, 
corona, it wasn't the thing that you worried about it for. But at the, the right thing to do, he didn't feel particularly well. He was not unwell, he had a bit of a sniffle, took a swab and unfortunately tested positive, which was unexpected from the US. So one thing is that. Mm -hmm. And then unfortunately the backlash of the way in which he was treated is that a whole lot of people stopped coming in to work. So there's a whole lot of problems about um, how do you get people reassured that they're not going to be thrown under a bus when they are actually doing the right things for their patients. Of course, if you're unwell, you don't go to work. But this guy wasn't unwell. Tell you what, you are a problem solver. Thank you for your time. Thank Dr. Rakesh Hakawil.